Good evening, and welcome back. Welcome back for season two of Dead Time with Mr. Hare. And tonight, I'm going to continue our stories. Dead Time was designed to tell stories. Not just stories, but your stories. Your stories, your tales, your encounters with the paranormal, your ghost stories, your strange encounters of things that go bump in the night. Is it just a shadow outside the corner of your eye? Is it your imagination? Or is it something much, much more? At the night morgue at Birkenhead, we leave the decision entirely up to you. Whether you believe in the paranormal, whether you maybe you don't believe in the paranormal, or maybe you might have been on the fence, or have a certain curiosity for it. Before we begin our story, I'm going to ask you something very important. Are you sitting comfortably? And I am going to give a very big special thank you to Julie Wallace. Julie Wallace has sent in this story, and she has sent in her own ghostly tale, and we at the Night Morgue, Birkenair, can't thank her enough for sharing this. Julie, if you're watching, which I really hope you are, thanks ever so much for sending this. I hope, hope you and your family, I wish you all the best. Now, Julie's story takes place in Christmas 2021. It was Christmas 2021. My husband and I went to our youngest daughter's house, Sarah. Our daughter and her fiance, Ben, both in their 30s, have three children a boy and two girls. We live in a three bedroomed house with a sitting room, the dining room, and the conservatory, and the kitchen all on the ground floor. Upstairs, that's two of the three bedrooms. And in two of the three bedrooms, two large bedrooms and a large family bathroom. On the top floor is Sarah and Ben's sweet ben sweet ensuite bedroom, the TV area, the reading room, the ensuite shower room. Normally the two girls share the front large bedroom. The son has the large back bedroom, but as we were there for Christmas, we had our grandson's room. It has a double bed, and all the children shared the front bedroom. Our bedroom was directly under the stairs, and from the top room, but now it is time for the ghostly side of the story. I was awake. It was Christmas morning, around 4am, and the children were awake. My husband, my husband and I could hear them open their stockings and eat their chocolate coins. They played with their bouncy balls. They giggled and they squawked. The stage whispered. All of what you would expect from an eight-year-old and two seven-year-olds. We had our bedroom door open. We had wanted to hear the children awake. We also had our window open. We always slept with our windows open. I was awake, so was my husband. We were both chatting. I was considering getting up, but I was also comfortable. I am old and had a late night. We'd all had a late night. As I was on the verge of getting out of bed, 
I was told by my husband. Sarah was up. And we had heard her bedroom door slammed. I presumed he was a draft. And when Sarah's bedroom opened her bedroom door, she too also slept with her window open. My first thought was that Sarah would think I was slamming the door in a passive aggressive way to make sure she knew I was awake. Then I realised Sarah's up. You're being you're being too loud. Nanny and Grandad are still asleep. It's way too early. It's not even five o'clock. Yes, you're not careful, you'll be too tired. Or words to that effect, but muffled without actually hearing the words. That makes sense. We did not hear the words as such due to the muffledness, but we heard the tone. The children all went back to sleep. I was impressed. I mean, to get three children back to sleep very early on Christmas morning was impressive. I thought I struggled to get back to sleep myself. I do suffer insomnia, but was pleasantly surprised to awake the second, second time at 7 a.m. Everyone was awake, and my daughter Sarah dashed into the room. Merry Christmas, Mummy. Well done on settling them back in. Just tell me how you did it. You never go back to sleep for me. I laughed, and I looked at her. She was serious. I, I didn't go to them. I thought you were mad. Apparently. Sarah and Ben were laid awake too. Sarah had decided it was time to go downstairs to the children. And Ben had said, Wait, your mother is in there settling them. And they both heard a stern but not unkind voice telling the children, It's time for sleep now. I absolutely promise you, all this words of this tale are true. Obviously, we asked the children who went into them. The youngest one said it was Sarah. The middle one said, well, she didn't see anything, but she heard the voice. And the middle one had said she thought it was a nanny, me, as she had. Long white hair. Yes, I do have long blonde hair. But mine is tied up when I sleep. I would like to again say thanks ever so much to Julie Wallace for sending this story over. Now, on a side note, do you always find it amazing about ghosts and these ghostly stories? I mean, when we think of ghosts, you immediately think of you no know, abandoned derelict buildings, the graveyards at the front, the real derelict appearances, the rundownness, the tragic backstories of the buildings. But you often find in something I think we've all noticed with most ghost stories, they don't seem to happen there. They don't seem to happen here in your homes, in the normality of homes. And sometimes these stories more than stories and sometimes things have that bump in the night a lot closer than what we actually realise please hit that like and subscribe button and just remember to anyone who is nerved by the story is it just a story or is it more than a story again thanks ever so much Julie for sending this Good night everyone, and stay spooky.